And JP Morgan. JP Morgan. Stop. JP Morgan. JP Morgan and its predecessors have been involved in almost one fourth. John 7, verse 24. Stop judging by mere appearances, but instead judge correctly. Acts 15, verse 9. And he made no distinction between us and them, cleansing their hearts by faith. God does not want us to discriminate ourselves from one another, nor does he want us to show discrimination to those who have different religious thoughts than us. But in today's world, this is not what we are seeing. Religious discrimination will be there in the end times, and that's what some of these organizations in the world are doing already. JP Morgan Chase reportedly debanked the charity National Committee for Religious Freedom because of its religious and political opinions last year. In reply, a new shareholder resolution was introduced, demanding that the bank respect human rights through recognizing possible variables that may lead to discrimination in the supply of services based on race, color, religion, sex, national origin, or social, political, or religious views. This Religious Freedom Committee was founded by former Kansas Governor Sam Brownback. Brownback is a former Republican member of the House and Senate from Kansas, as well as a previous U.S. ambassador at large for worldwide religious freedom under the Trump administration. He established the National Committee for Religious Liberty. But why has JP Morgan done that, and what link does it have with the rapture? Let's find out today. JP Morgan Chase canceled the account three weeks after it was opened in May 2022. Brownback, with various other conservative organizations, just questioned if the action was motivated by religious or political considerations. JP Morgan has stated that the choice had nothing to do with political or religious beliefs, and that it was taken because federal rules required it to have more information about donations and beneficiaries than the organization gave. The National Center for Public Policy Research made a shareholder suggestion in December, following on a similar suggestion from the National Legal and Policy Center in November both of which called for greater openness. J.B. Morgan asked the Securities and Exchange Commission staff for approval to withdraw the motions from discussion at its annual shareholder meeting on May 22nd. In broad terms, shareholders have the right to propose resolutions, but a publicly listed corporation may request approval from the SEC to omit a resolution under specific legal conditions. Brian V. Brenny, a lawyer representing J.P. Morgan, asked for in two distinct letters in January that the SEC staff eliminate shareholder proposals uploaded by the National Legal and Policy Center and the National Center for Public Policy Research asking for greater openness regarding the bank's decision to drop accounts, citing primarily its decision concerning the National Committee for Religious Freedom. The two shareholder recommendations vary in that one wants information concerning alleged government collaboration, and the other is concerned with bank procedures for terminating accounts. The National Legal and Policy Center resolution requested that the bank publish information while excluding private customer information that denies the company's policy in responding to requests to close by any government department or organization working under the control of the executive branch of the United States government. According to the resolution, the corporation must submit the name and position of the government official initiating the request, the nature and scope of the request, the date of the request, the outcome of the request, and the reason or rationale for the company's response or lack thereof. However, the director of the Corporate Integrity Project of the National Legal and Policy Center, Paul Chesser, said that the firm needs to be very much transparent about the decisions they make to debank the clients. On the other side, Chesser mentioned the new alleged financial links that emerged between J.P. Morgan and Jeffrey Epstein, the billionaire who died in a jail cell while undergoing trial on federal sex offender accusations. He also said that it's a no-brainer of a comparison. Sam Brownback, a wonderful, upstanding public servant, spokesman for religious freedom. In comparison to Jeffrey Epstein, J.P. Morgan decided to shut off his account on a whim. One can't think of a more obvious parallel to make. According to a federal complaint filed by the government of the United States Virgin Islands, Epstein utilized his Chase accounts to pay more than $1 million to his alleged victims. Unredacted parts of the complaint, originally reported by LawAndCrime.com, also state that Chase's Global Corporate Security Division and the bank's Risk Management Division provided warnings regarding Epstein's accusations. However, the bank did not close the account. In addition to that, according to a report, Republican attorneys general from 19 states have also accused J.P. Morgan Chase of canceling accounts and discriminating against customers based on their political or religious beliefs. 
Republicans from 19 states said in a letter to JP Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon that the bank had canceled prominent organizations' checking accounts and asked screening questions about religion and politics before reinstating them. According to the attorneys general, JP Morgan abruptly canceled the checking account of the National Committee for Religious Freedom, or NCRF, a nonprofit, before delivering a letter advising it of the decision. According to the lawsuit, a bank staffer finally told the group that JP Morgan would reinstate the NCRF's account if it gave a list of its contributors, a list of the political candidates it's planned to support, and details of the criteria used to evaluate its support and endorsements. A Chase representative told Fox Business that the bank has never withdrawn from a customer relationship based on a political or religious affiliation, but an article in the Christian magazine World revealed a disturbing pattern of withdrawal of services by conservative and Christian groups. Other watchdog groups noted similar concerns. The corporate bias report of the stock exchange of 1792 estimates that the company is likely to be high risk for offering services based on views and beliefs and the American Foundation for Conservative Values, which conducts its annual survey of conservative investors, lists J.P. Morgan Chase among the worst and most hostile to conservative values. Paul Chesser of the Corporate Integrity Project at the Conservative National Law and Policy Center filed an opinion in response to the company and the SEC upholding Banson's decision. The shareholder proposal failed, but Banson's challenge is underway, and the events of the past two weeks are just the beginning. Look for more resistance to financial institutions deciding who has a bank account and who doesn't. But is this all related to the biblical prophecies and the end of times? Let's have a look at that. Some people think that an antichrist spirit is at work. During the tribulation period, every bank is going to deny the services of those who refuse to go according to teachings of the antichrist or deny to bow to the antichrist because every bank on earth will be controlled by him, and he will try his level best to use every financial tool available on the planet for his own good. Revelation chapter 13 verse 3 And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. The Antichrist will be a political figure who goes forth conquering and conquering. His rule will be one of warfare and bloodshed. This text could mean that the Antichrist will be the target of an assassination attempt. Whatever it is, it's a momentous occurrence that causes him to be immensely celebrated. If you start the book of Revelation and simply begin reading it as an unfolding scenario, it goes something like this. There will be wars, famines, disease epidemics, and celestial signs alerting the world to a crisis. Then comes the Antichrist, or political ruler, who will start to establish control over the entire earth. He'll be aided by a religious leader known as the False Prophet. They work together to create a cohesive social, economic, and religious system that rules the planet. The only thing fighting them are the people of God and these two prophets. They're called the Two Witnesses, who appear in Jerusalem and begin to speak against this power. The rest of the book, basically the final half of the book, is about the overthrow of this system. The Antichrist, the Beast, the False Prophet with the number 666 is overthrown by judgments and plagues. The majority of them are very cosmic. Asteroids collide with the Earth, the water turns to blood and so on, until finally, Jesus Christ returns as a warrior on a white horse and establishes God's kingdom. The Bible foretells a cashless society. This is not difficult to imagine in an age when technology is changing at a rate unparalleled in human history. We have debit cards, credit cards, fast pass cards, phone apps, online bill pay, text pay, barcode scanners, QR codes, and more devices. Man's number six in the Bible. It's one less than seven. God's number is 777. This 666 number serves as the Antichrist's identification, also known as the mark of the beast. Evidently, no one will be able to purchase or sell anything without it. Dr. Elwell stated in the Tyndale Bible Dictionary, this mark of the beast is necessary for a person to engage in business or economic transactions involved in physical survival. Perhaps it also serves to identify such persons for martyrdom, verses 7 through 10. It stands in sharp contrast to the seal of God, marking out the servants of God in chapter 7, verse 1 through 8. Now by the matter of things, it seems like JP Morgan is already on that task. How the organization is debanking its customers shows a connection to the rapture. And not only this, but JP Morgan and other firms in the USA are also working on introducing the digital currency, which will give birth to a cashless society. 
FedNow will gradually introduce it to Americans in June and July in order to avoid an uprising and run on the bank. The Federal Reserve is the central bank, and through local banks, in this beta launch, they will offer benefits for everyone to register and transform their savings into digital money, with accounts getting an additional 2-5% to in savings. Because all the banks are regulated by the central bank, once you sign up, you cannot exit the system or move banks. The bank will tell you to download their own software and create a wallet similar to Apple Pay. Will the mark of the beast be a simple QR code with the number 666 or an RFID chip that everyone must carry in their palms? It could then readily be connected to the money in your account. When you purchase something, you simply scan your hand or a facial scan to pay. Both of these concepts are now being tested and evaluated in small group studies across the United States by Bank of America and JP Morgan Chase Bank. This definitely makes us question that if one doesn't do all this, will they be able to get an account in the bank? Well, as for now, we can say that once these regulations are implemented, then there will be no going back. The mark of the beast is of great concern here, and anyone who doesn't possess it will eventually be debanked, just like this organization. What are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed today's video and found it interesting, then make sure to leave us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so you can always be updated with the most exciting content as soon as it's uploaded. Thanks for watching. See you again soon in another video.